Yo everyone, Dan Central here and uh, welcome to a video response to my awesome mate, Mr Shock16, um, which will include a little bit of a rant and a little bit of a quick update in terms of um, what I'm doing at the minute and uh, probably why you haven't seen a video for a little bit since the uh, finale episode of the Sunday Stroll. Um, so, quick update then, I guess, before we start. Uh, I'm still around. Um, I know I've taken hiatuses in the past, uh, but I vowed not to do those ever again. Um, so, it's not even a mini break. I've just got some videos that I've kind of got that need editing that are done. They just need to go up, basically. So, I've been active in terms of recording stuff. I've just not had them active in terms of on YouTube to get them ready and, you know, live. So, I am still around. Uh, if anyone's wondering if I'm going to have another hiatus, uh, I've got no plans to do that. Um, so um, that's all good. So I won't suddenly disappear again like I've done a few times in the past uh, for quite extended periods as well, uh, which wasn't great. Um, so I am still around. I've got some, some videos that I've already recorded that I'm going to be looking to edit and get up soon. Uh, and um, some other exciting stuff that's going to be coming your way soon as well that I won't spoil um, right now. Well, I won't spoil at all. Um, so yeah, basically, just to let you all know, I'm still around, um, still doing videos, um, just not got um, around to uploading some of them yet. Because yeah, I am really, really busy. Um, I picked up loads and loads and loads of fitness classes that I'm teaching, uh, loads of shifts working in a gym, uh, lots of personal training, and I'm pushing my own private music business as well, teaching piano, keyboard and music theory. Um, so I'm trying to get myself out there to get people interested and see if they're interested in being being taught piano, keyboard or music theory. Um, so with all that kind of running together, music and fitness, it's not leaving me a hell of a lot of time um, to myself really. And any time I do get, I'm kind of just relaxing because I'm so like tired because it does take it out of you. Um, not that I'm complaining because I love doing it. I mean, at the end of the day, if I was working somewhere that I didn't enjoy, which is actually going to be, um, I'm going to be coming on to talking about stuff like that in a bit um, in the response to Shox's, um recent shocks vlogs but if it was a job that i didn't enjoy then yeah i'd be less inclined to put in you know a lot of effort and stuff but because i love it so much uh, i want to do it so when i'm tired it's a good tiredness if that makes sense because i'm feeling accomplished like i've accomplished stuff uh, and it's incredibly rewarding so still around um just trying to prioritize my time really but i am still around and i'm going to be putting some videos up um, very very soon all right so in case anyone was wondering cool right so the main point of this video then is yeah as i said a going to do a video response to my awesome mate shock 16 uh, i just wanted to answer this one because i thought it was a great topic that he covered uh, and i just felt like getting involved um, considering it's a fairly nice day today it's, the sun's not out but it's not cold um, so i thought i'd just do another response while uh, i'm walking around so uh, basically he asked, and in his recent Shox vlogs, which are absolutely awesome, so do keep the Shox vlogs going by the way mate, because they're absolutely quality. Um, he asked in his most recent one, um, what was your first ever job? How long did you stick at it for? Um, did you enjoy it? And also on the flip side, what was your worst job and how long was you there for? Um, really good um, <laughs> topic actually. Um, I've been very fortunate that a lot of my jobs I really enjoyed, but there was one that I absolutely hated to death, which I'll go into in a minute, uh, and was a bit of a mistake me actually going into it. I should never have done it, um, but I'll go into it in a minute. Um, now, the first ever job that I ever had, and it might not sound like much um, to you guys, but it's a personal thing because I just got on with the people there so well, that kind of made it for me as well. Um, but basically, my first ever job when I um, was a... Uh, Still at school, uh, I was in sixth form doing my A-levels. Um, I was applying for universities and stuff and trying to get in um, to apply to do a degree. Uh, and I needed a bit of extra money while I was doing all that as well. And I basically went and worked in a garden centre. So, yeah, not your typical average first job. Um, but I worked in a garden centre as a sales assistant. So I was basically working on the tills, um, putting items through, um, pricing up plant pots and uh, compost and... Um, flowers and stuff like that um uh yeah basically um filling up stock um answering the telephone things like that kind of general sort of admin work as well and computer work and uh absolutely loved it i absolutely loved it um because it sounds quite 
kind of substandard stuff but because everyone there was so nice and so supportive and so respectful I just enjoyed it so much more the management was so switched on they knew exactly what they were doing they looked after their staff which you don't really get much really in general uh, so I was very lucky actually um, to find management that were like that um, and uh, yeah I was very 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 lucky to uh, be able to find a job where the management are like that um, so that was really, really good. And, and they made sure you took your breaks. If they'd noticed that you hadn't had a break yet or um, you were still working hard and you'd not really sat down, they'd actually come up to you and be like, um, have you had a break yet? And if you're like, no, they'd be like, well, go and have one. Uh, and they'd also make everyone kind of discuss in the mornings who, when everyone's going to take their breaks. And uh, then you basically we do like a we used to do a list of like names and times of who's going to have their lunch and when. And then when it got to that time, people would just know that you're going to have your lunch, and then you would just go and sit down and have you know half an hour. Um, so it was great. It was very well organised. Loved the job. Loved the people there. Um, I've, I go back there quite frequently actually, just to see everyone because a lot of the people still work there from when I was there in 2006, and they're still there. So. Yeah, it was just a, such an awesome job. I was very lucky to get that, actually. Uh, and again, you might be sitting there thinking, what? It's just a, 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 a little garden centre job. There's nothing special about it. Why would you be that, you know, that um, full of praise about it? Well, I am, because I loved it. And yeah, maybe it's a personal thing, but I just thought it was great. I used to get up in the morning and actually want to go there. And, uh, you know, it didn't matter who was in, I got on with everyone, everyone kind of was pleasant to me, supported me, and it was uh, fantastic. So my first ever job was working in a garden centre as a sales assistant, but I loved it, absolutely loved it. In fact, I loved it so much, I worked there for a year and a half, and I only left there because I was going to uni. Otherwise, I probably would have stayed there for a bit longer. And not only that, um, I think it was my second year into uni, or my third, one of them, basically a couple of years later after I left, um, I was back for the summer because uh, I was at uni in London but I come back for the summer they offered me another month's worth of work because they were desperate and I went and did it I went and did it I was like I don't care I love it there you know I'd progressed a fair bit since then I was on to doing sort of bigger and not better things as such because I loved it there but bigger things I guess and uh, yeah I still went back and did another month there as well a couple of years later because I loved it so much so yeah I was very lucky that my first ever job was um, somewhere that I loved. Um, from there, um, I know we're not really going through our employment history, but from there I did go and work in a restaurant as a waiter. That I really enjoyed as well. Uh, different, um, but um, yeah, enjoyed that. Um, fast paced environment, but I liked all that. Um, and yeah, again, enjoyed that. Um, very social as well. Um, you, I got on with everyone and it was really good. Um, and then I went straight into the uh, fitness industry uh, after I graduated from uni. Um, so, yeah, I've been very lucky, actually. However, moving on to my worst job, there's only been one and uh, should never have done it. Um, should never have done it. Uh, I thought that it would be a good idea. I thought it would be a good experience. Uh, I suppose, in a way, it's good to say to people that I've tried it, um, but should never have done it. It was not a good idea. Um, and that was actually going to work in an office. Um, now, I was working in the fitness industry um, full time. Unfortunately, the salary wasn't absolutely amazing um, and I couldn't sort of finance everything just from that salary. Um, so, I saw a job in an office and the money was absolutely fantastic. The salary was like double what I was on. Um, so I thought, well, let's just go and do it. But then my parents were like, yeah, but Dan, it's a completely different industry. You're going to be sitting on your arse all day, probably answering high volumes of calls. It's probably going to really, really wind you up. And also, you won't be doing your passion. You won't be teaching classes. You're not going to enjoy it. I wouldn't. I really wouldn't do it. But I was like, no, 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 it's fine. I'll be all right because I can teach, like, you know, the odd class every now and again when I'm not working there. I can balance the two. It'll be fine. Da, 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 da. Oh, how wrong I was. I should have listened to my parents. Yeah, it was horrible. Um, and not only that, you know, you tend to think of office jobs are going to be like your typical nine to five. Well, out of all the ones I happened to find, out of, out of all the ones you could have had, the one I happened to get offered a job for, uh, you either worked seven till six um, or you worked nine till eight. So whatever you did, you did 11 hours. 
And because the job was so demanding, you struggled to even find a break throughout that entire 11 hours. Um, and it was, yeah, obviously illegal. Um, but the thing is, if you went and had a break for half an hour, by the time you came back to your desk, so much crap had gone on whilst you were eating your lunch that then it would take you twice as long to get through the rest of it. So then you end up staying past your finish time. You end up staying for an extra half an hour at the end that you're not paid for. So then you think, well, I better not have a break then because otherwise I'm going to be here till God knows what time. Um, and it almost got to a stage where it's like, if you don't have a break, you're going to finish on time. If you do, you're going to be late. And that is absolutely just insane and it's affecting my health and I felt ill um, through doing the, the job as well um, it got me really down um, just started to turn into from what I've heard from friends apparently I started to turn into a really quite obnoxious person without realizing that I used to snap at people and not sort of be fully aware I was doing it and then sort of apologize later and it was just yeah I was being really like I really sort of closed down and uh the only thing that kept me going was the money, but everything else was just messed up. Um, and it was just evil. It was just an evil place to work. Uh, I'm not going to mention the company name, just because the kind of person I am, I don't want anything to come back and bite me in the arse later on. Um, just because, at the end of the day, sometimes you do forget that these YouTube videos do go out publicly to everybody. Uh, so the last thing I want to do is start to cause problems for myself. Um, but basically, it was an awful job. And... Uh, the, the, having said that though the, the random thing was that it was completely new to me I'd never done anything like, I'd never done anything like it before um, and uh, actually the management were really happy with me despite despite taking the piss out of people and you know working us into the ground like we were machines when it came to like meetings and like you know self appraisals and like you know meetings on your performance I always like you know went through with flying colours they were always really impressed me um, but that wasn't enough to keep me going there because I was just like, well, I may be doing a good job, but that's because I put in like, uh, you know, 500% effort, which is just ridiculous. And it was just, it was not good. It was not good. And it was like, if you left everything up in the air just so you could leave on time, then when you started again the next morning, you still had to deal with the crap that you'd left the night before, as well as the stuff that's coming for you on the, on the next fresh day. Um, so it was just, it wasn't good. It was not good. And in the end, um, I didn't even work my notice. I was just like, I can't do it. I can't even bear to do it another day, let alone another month. So I just went. Um, it was a different industry, so I didn't need a reference from them. Um, and I just went. I just disappeared. I was like, I'm gone. I'm so gone. I'm not having this happen to me anymore. I can't do it. I can't do this anymore. Um, without sounding too dramatic. Um, but you kind of had to be there to see how bad it was. And it was just, I had to get out. The money was great, but it wasn't worth it. In the end, my happiness became more important than the money uh, and, and you know people do say money isn't everything uh, and to an extent that's correct I think um, but yeah I was so unhappy so miserable and I wasn't enjoying life I wasn't going out I wasn't seeing people I was just so down uh, and since I left there I've become the opposite the complete opposite and I'm starting to enjoy life again so so yeah basically office work is not for me should never have done it uh, I actually lasted there just over six months how I did that I will never know um, my probation was six months and I passed it as well um, but yeah there for just over six months and then I left so um, so that's it really so yeah um, worst job ever I was working in an office will never do it ever again and since then I've gone back into the fitness industry again properly um, and this time um, it's working a lot better because although again you know as a sole thing on its own the money's not fantastic um, now I'm at a stage where because I'm pushing my business now um, I'm running that alongside it whereas the first time around in the fitness industry I wasn't running my music alongside it um, but now I am now I'm starting to earn a fair good bit of money finally so now I'm finally where I want to be doing my passions in two different areas and earning a decent wage from it as well so now I couldn't be happier um, but I ha like I said in general I'm so lucky that it's only been one job that I've had that I couldn't stand um, I've been so lucky that most of the others I have actually enjoyed um, so there we go, and then just to quickly finish, and I've gone on for a bit, apologies, but because I haven't had a video up in a while, hopefully you can forgive me <laughs> for having a long video now. Um, but yeah, just, just to finish then, um, I just wanted to um, have a bit of a rant, because I know how Shox likes to have a load of rants in his, and I thought, why not follow the pattern and uh, do one myself? Uh, and that is, bloody, <clears throat> just get into the mode, get into the zone. <laughs> bloody drivers right drivers that drive right up your ass right and they sit there and they try and intimidate you and they try and make you speed up 
and then you're going to be the the one that will speed up to get away from them and you'll get suddenly you know flashed by a camera and you'll be the one that suffers and gets a speeding ticket and they get off scot-free so if any of you've ever had a dickhead right up your ass when you're driving don't don't do anything don't speed up don't do anything like that because at the end of the day, you're the one that's going for this you know going within the speed limits you're the one that's abiding by the law they're the one that are breaking the law and at the end of the day they're the ones that are going to get caught out so the worst thing you can do is speed up because you're likely to get caught so what i would say is don't let it phase you eventually they'll get the message and they'll either overtake you or they'll hold back and even if they don't screw them let them sit there you're not doing anything wrong they are you know because that's the other thing they sit right up your ass they couldn't be much closer to you and then they won't even overtake either like you might be on a you might be on a motorway or you might be on a single carriageway and like there's plenty of space for them to overtake yet for some unknown reason they won't and it's just like seriously you know or it might be a narrow road but there's still enough space to overtake yet they won't and it's just like are you actually having a laugh um, or they'll be right up your ass, and they'll start flashing you and they think oh by flashing you they're going to intimidate you more to now make you speed up nah no 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 doesn't work with me so yeah if any of you guys have ever had dickheads right up your ass, um right up behind you um trying to intimidate you then uh let me know in the comments underneath there's a guy that's just walked out of his garden and he's staring at me so we're going to turn around um but yeah, I'm nearly at the end of this video anyway. So yes, yeah, so if you've ever had anyone up your up your rear end um, on the road, let me know underneath. What do you do? Does it intimidate you or do you not let it phase you? Um, in the dark as well, if they flash you, does it intimidate you or are you okay? Cool. Let me know. And uh, yeah, that's my rant. Thanks a lot for sticking with the channel. Uh, I've been Dan Central. You've been great. People are walking towards me, so I'm going to end the video. See you later on. Laters. Oh yeah, and uh, one thing I completely forgot to mention as well, um, with the whole rant thing, um, people right up your, right up your uh, the rear of your car. Um, have you ever had it where they put their full beam on as well? Because people think it's only, only bad when they're coming towards you with a full beam on and they don't turn it off. But it can be just as bad when they right up your ass and do it because it bounces off your rear view mirror, of course, and that flashes right into your eyes and now you can't see where the hell you're going or what you're doing and you get those really horrible patterns like um, flashes that come, you know, where you blink, you sort of blink and then you get those horrible light specks in front of your eyes uh, and that just completely restricts your view as well. So not only a, a case of them being right up your ass trying to flash their lights and just not overtaking or trying to intimidate you but also have you ever had it where they then put their full beam on and keep it on and it bounces off your rearview mirror and it restricts your vision have you ever had that as well let me know and uh yeah i'll be back with another video soon cheers everyone laters